Hi friends, today uh, we are going to discuss about the role of osteoblast in activation of the osteoclast that this is a series or a step in which the osteoblast they activated the osteoclast and initiate uh, the process of uh, remodeling of bone so before going through this uh, process I just want to uh, illustrate five steps which uh, is important in the resorption and then the formation of the bone so it's a physiological process and it's all the time uh, happening in our uh, bone so number first step that is the activation of the osteoclast that the osteoclast is activated by certain factors and they have certain receptors on their surfaces which help in the activation of the first the uh, precursor osteo Classed, then different precursor osteoclast they combine with each other okay and they form multinucleated osteoclast this is the mature osteoclast having 4 to 20 nuclei and they have the capability to damage or to resolve the bone so this is the first step that is the activation of the osteoclast and the second step is a resorption after the uh, after the activation of the osteoclast the osteoclast use hydrogen ion and release chloride into the bone on the bone surface and this hydrogen ion and chloride they form HCl And this HCL then start damaging the bone in certain other chemicals. So this process is resorption, bone resorption. After that, certain macrophages they activate it and they try to clean the debris. Okay, these are the macrophage. They clean the damaged bone. And with this step there is certain growth factors certain activating factors and these activating factors they activate the osteoblast and then the osteoblast they start to do its activity so their activity is the formation of new bone cells so this is another step that is the osteogenesis by osteoblast for example is the new cell layer or a new layer of bone formed by the osteoblast and the last step is a resting phase that the bones so one completely uh, recycle its process is it recycled and uh, once it form again it undergoes a resting phase and the resting phase is normally 20 months okay after that then start again the activation of osteoclast then again start the process of resorption then again the process of reverse then again again the osteogenesis and then again resting phase in this way our bone continuously uh, damaged or resorbed by the osteoclast and again formed by the osteoclast so now we will go that how the osteoblast activate the uh, precursor osteoclast and then uh, differentiate into the uh, osteo uh, osteoclast that is the mature osteoclast and then uh, how the osteoclast work so number first first of all we have a presentation here that here we have osteoblast the osteoblast have receptors for different hormones for different factors those factors either activate or inhibit the pathway of activation and differentiation of the osteoclast for example there are different sort of uh, hormones and different sort of other chemical factors which inhibit the osteoblast to express a rank a ranking uh, receptor on its surface so what is a rank a rank is a receptor uh, activator of nuclear 
kappa uh, beta ligand this is the the rank and it has influence with the uh, receptor activator of the nuclear kappa a receptor present on the precursor osteoclast so these factors are right on the right side that for example vitamin D parathyroid hormone prostaglandins E interleukin 11 and some glucocorticoids thyroid hormone histamine and all these chemical factors these hormones they have influence on the osteoblast once they influence oste oste on the osteoblast the osteoblast express a rank ligand on its surface and this link rank ligand interact with the rank receptor present on the osteoclast precursor this leads to the maturation and differentiation of the precursor osteoblast once this osteoblast osteoclast precursor is matured and differentiate not only one okay many osteoclast precursor osteoclast they mature and they combine and they form a multinucleated osteoclast once osteoclast form as i discuss here that it start the resorption of the bone by releasing hcl and certain other chemicals so this is the activator pathway that these are the chemical factors which act on the osteoblast influence the osteoblast to express a receptor ligand on its surface which interact with the ranklin and then start the process of uh, differentiation and maturation of the osteoclast so there are certain other factors which inhibit this pathway for example uh, one of the most important that is the osteoestrogen uh, estrogen and other uh, factor which is very important and it inhibit the rank lean pathway that is the osteoprotogerin the osteoprotogerin and uh, osteoestrogen they have the negative effect on the osteoblast and they inhibit the rank and rank clean pathway they inhibit so once the osteogen uh, estrogen and the uh, osteoprotogerin is available it inhibit the rank clean uh, pathway so bone resorption will not occur and bone will not damage by the osteoclast so as we uh, see that uh, after menopause the woman uh, have the deficiency of the estrogen and once the estrogen deficiency the rank and rank link pathway is not inhibited anymore then the osteoclastic activity increases than that of the osteoblastic activity so what happened in after the menopause the estrogen level decrease and there is another pathway that is non estrogenic pathway which is activate and it is it become dominant for example this is the pathway that is in which the osteoblast they release or express mcsf a receptor or ligand this mcsf interact with cfms receptor present on the osteoclast precursor and this cause the activation and maturation and differentiation of the osteoclast precursor and again into the mature osteoclast so we see there are three steps three pathways number first activation by certain hormone number second second activation by non estrogenic pathway through this pathway number first and number second and number third that is the inhibitory pathway and there is the uh, estrogen and osteoprotogerin which inhibit the expression of rank ligand on the surface of osteoblast so it will not interact with the rank 
so no activation of the uh, osteoclast precursor and hence no resorption of bone so let's see an animated video uh, about the osteoclast and osteoblast here i have the trabecular bone and in between the trabecular bone we have uh, the bone marrow and there is discontinuous capillaries having rbc inside in hematopoietic stem cells which is responsible for the uh, process of formation of blood cells and here we can see osteoclast it's a very beautiful presentation that here we have the osteoclast this is the multinucleated osteoclast multinucleated osteoclast and this osteoclast they are doing the process of resorption okay here we can see increased bone resorption it damaging the bone this area we can see a rough area and here at the side we have the osteoblast these are the osteoblast and these osteoblast we can see here no bone resorption they are forming a new bone so this area is really clear and this area is not so clear in a rough area so we can see here osteoclastic activity and osteoblastic activity Thank you for listening.